It's Jessica with Rock on Jag, brought to you by Brutal Films for Jag TV. Today I am here with Robert from Escape the Fate. That's right, Robert. Um, can you tell us a little bit about behind the name of the band, where it comes from? Well, the fate, I guess, that we were trying to escape is essentially failure. And every band that we've ever been in before this seemed to fail, and we always had big aspirations that we would succeed and make money and play for lots of people and write great songs and get signed to a record label and that whole thing. And up until this band, that seemed to be the fate, was that we would keep failing and never do it, you know? So, made the name Escape the Fate, and we did. How has the band style changed since your debut album to your most recent album? Well, tremendously. I mean, it, we've, just, we've just grown, you know, we've, we've changed and we've wanted to keep our style changing while keeping it real, I guess. And, you know, we've progressed. It's just basically whatever sounds good to us. Um, I don't know, we've gotten different, like, technology, I guess, like a computer and stuff, <laughs> like, that changes the way you write a song, and, I don't know, and having to write on the road, and then, yeah, I don't know, there's lots of different things that affect why you sound the way you sound, but we've definitely progressed a lot. Um, which album best describes you as a band, would you say? I would say our current album, the self-titled Escape the Fate. What yeah. song would you recommend to new fans to get to know... Your band. Oh wow! See, that's unfair because our our sounds pretty diverse. Um, we've like got a lot of straight up pop rock sounding stuff that's straightforward, and then we also got really heavy freaking shredding and craziness, mosh pit sounding stuff, and then we have some ballads and stuff for the ladies, you know. So, so. It varies, really. I can't really say one song in particular. Um, I don't know, but if I were to tell them to go listen to one, it would probably be Gorgeous Nightmare. I think that's just us in a nutshell. Okay, um, and that one, that video, was directed by Robbie Starbuck. Yeah. How was that experience for you? It was very interesting. <laughs> um, he was... I don't know, he's he's a very unique individual. He's like cool. He's he does his own thing. He's super young. I think he's younger than us. And so it was kind of hard to you know, he's directing it and we're you gave him the idea and letting him kind of tell us what to do, how to get that idea. I was pretty difficult when it's like a kid, you know. And but he's a visionary and and we didn't realize it, it was super frustrating that day. It was pretty hectic. I mean, we'd like you know people were flying in that day and it was just like everything didn't start like usually you start a music video like at five in the morning we didn't start till like five in the afternoon and we'd been there since seven in the morning so shit was just like a mess all this we just didn't even think it could get done and then we had to fly the next day to australia so we're like we're not gonna have time to do this and but you know it ended up coming out rad and you know we got everything we wanted you know we wanted fucking a lion or a big cat of some sort and we got that and we wanted girls like we always have we gotta keep it real you know and so we have we got everything we wanted out of that video and working with him was like it was frustrating because he had a clear vision but so did we but at the end of the day like we were able to put it together and, and get what we both wanted out of it that's awesome what's it like playing from a local spot to going on a national tour like this one man that's insane you know like no matter what I guess the, the similarity is like you're always still ambitious and you always want to reach I guess a next level but you know it's clear when you're on to another level than where you started like on a tour like this one playing on the same bill as you know my favorite band Avenged Sevenfold you know and Seether and Three Days Grace those are bands that I grew up with and you know those are bands i heard on the radio and always dreamed that one day we could be next to them and now we are so it's clear that we've come at least some ways you know and playing a local spot is like you know it's all your friends and i didn't realize it back then that it's all friends and family that go to your shows and then when you come here it's just people who know you solely for your music and they're there to see you perform this music and so it's it's really cool. It's interesting to see the growth and everything, and you know you gotta appreciate it because it's it's pretty awesome to get to go to different ends of the earth and play music and make people happy. How 
has social media helped you reach out to your fans? Well, I think we're probably the first band to like really totally make it off of you know MySpace at the time. It's Facebook now. You know MySpace is still relevant, but obviously Facebook kind of took over. But we got signed because of MySpace. They heard our stuff on there, and we were one of the first bands to actually make a pretty big deal from using the computer. And before that, it was you know tapes and CDs and getting it around. And so it, it helped us branch out, and you know, and that's just the way it is now. That's the way you get your stuff out. And in a way, it's cool because there's no middleman. There's no one telling you what to do or what not to do. It's like, here's my shit. If you like it, listen to it. You know. Yeah. And so it's pretty cool, but at the same time, it's like the attention span's too quick, and our fans aren't satisfied. Like we just put our hearts and souls into this album, and it's like already been burnt out by a lot of people. You know, so each release of your albums um, you break previous release sales how does that feel oh it's just awesome to know we keep moving up you know and that's the goal I guess ultimately like we we always obviously aspire to be like you know the number one album and next to like pop artists like Britney Spears and shit like that right but it's, it's better for us especially in rock to be like a slow grow uphill you know I always looked at a band like Avenged or Metallica who didn't do it overnight they took their time with it and built it because they wanted to figure themselves out first and they wanted, you know, to, you know, maintain the fans they started with while allowing themselves to grow. And, you know, and sometimes if you if you shoot too high and you, you start at the top, you know, there's only one way to go once you're at the top, you know, so why not keep it climbing and going up? And it feels good to know that we're still going up, you know. What would you attribute to, you know, the success that you have of just getting better and better and having more record sales? hard work I guess if my manager will probably disagree with me because it's not that hard of work I guess but you know you just got to get out there and promote it you know um, the guy the singer his name's Jacoby the singer of Papa Roach once told me um, it's like if you want to be a great musician be a great businessman and how do you be a great businessman you go and you just promote yourself and you you show people your music you, you play on stage as much as you can in front of as many people as you can and you just keep that going and it gets tough it gets really draining and you want to go home and you miss your dog and your girlfriend and you know and the comforts you want to be able to go to the bathroom whenever you want and not have to go through the pouring rain you know to get somewhere and be stuck in a giant room and it's like okay I guess this is where I'm hanging out for today but at the end of the day, it's making your band immortal. It's making your music last forever, and that's what it's all about, you know. Would you ever consider doing a crossover song, and with what artists would you like to do that with? Oh, we've we've always been open on that stuff. We did a bunch of stuff with uh, with this album. We worked with Mick Mars from Motley Crue, and we've worked with, you know, different different artists, and our, our singers worked with um, some guys who do more dance and hip-hop stuff. And I know he's really big into the, what do you call that, like Skrillex? What is that stuff? The dubstep and all that? He's really, I don't know, like the electronic stuff. He's super into that. And uh, so is our guitar player. I'm I'm more of a straight rock guy, you know? But I, mean, I would love to work with anybody. It's always just a great experience to see how other people approach music. Like, I don't know, I would say, I guess, Black Eyed Peas or something. Because that guy, I don't get, I don't understand how he thinks something like sounds good. Like when he, I mean, it sounds bad, but like when he, when he like works on something on his like his computer or whatever it is, like when he hears this weird sound, how does that like sound cool to him? Because to me, I'd be like, well, that's not a guitar riff. It's, it's it doesn't sound right. There's no real drums. It doesn't sound right. So I'd like to get how he gets that. Because once the final product is there, it's like, holy shit, this sounds amazing. And I would have never thought that could be a song. You know what I mean? So I want to work with him and get like that experience and understand it. You know, but there's a lot of a lot of people. I would like to work with everybody, I guess. What advice would you give to a student who wants to get into the music industry? Mm, run away. <laughs> Don't do it. Oh. It's bad. The music industry is a bad place. No, I mean, you just got to do it, I guess. You got to just believe in yourself and, you know, know that what you're doing is is awesome. And, you know, go show it off to people and... You know, you don't necessarily, there's no right or wrong way to do music. And, you know, there's, you just got to go for it, I guess. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. You got it, dude.